Hi, folks, and welcome to the Mike Lopez TV Show. I'm your host, AC Mike. We'll bring you all things Atlantic City, politics, sports, dining, entertainment, and more. Our first guest tonight is Clyde Hughes, principal of AC Joseph Media and editor of FrontrunnerNewJersey.com. The rest of today's show will feature the mayor of the great city of Atlantic City, New Jersey, Mayor Marty Small Sr. So stick around. We'll be right back with our first guest. Hey folks, welcome back to the show. Our next guest is Clyde Hughes, principal for AC Joseph Media and editor for FrontRunnerNewJersey.com. Clyde, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, listen, it's a pleasure. Before we go anywhere, we want to know what the AC stands for. <laughs> no. well, well, the AC doesn't stand for Atlantic City, believe it or not. I, I had the company uh, AC Joseph Media since I was in Indiana. I lived in Indiana before I moved here to, to New Jersey. Uh, the, the AC and Joseph in the H is capitalized at the end, and it represents the first letters of uh, my father and his and, and his three brothers in a way to honor them uh, uh, for uh, creating the company since they were such a big influence in my life. The A is for Alex, the C is for Clinton, the J is for my father, I'm a junior, uh, jo Joseph Clyde, and the capital H at the end is for Hurley. So it's a personal thing uh, uh, that helps me remember them and how much they were influential in my life. But of course, I moved here, and everyone thinks it's Atlanta. it means Atlantic City, so I let them believe it. Listen, it's, it's a win-win. It's family, and it's AC, so yes. you can't you can't uh, lose there. That's a it's a great uh, name, and I love it. So listen, Clyde, got to meet you. Uh, one of our dear friends we were speaking about before the interview, uh, uh, Earl Harvey. Uh, um, yes, uh, AC Times uh, editor and owner. Uh, past we were at a, a, a memorial for him at Beret AC in Atlantic City on New York Avenue, but. We got to talk briefly, and, and what you do, uh, I'm going to tell the folks right now, and then you're going to take over from there. FrontRunnerNJ.com, uh, purpose, your mission, highlighting the people, events, and causes of South Jersey. Uh, you do it in a special way. You do it online, of course, but uh, also uh, one of the things I like, it's like a kind of restorative narrative. Uh, you know, you, you hit the uh, Hispanic and the African-American and, you know, the, the culture and, and Atlantic City, no other place like it. Tell us a little bit more about the uh, media group that you have, please, and, and your mission. Uh, yes, uh, I created uh, uh, FrontRunnerNewJersey.com. I am a old-time newspaper reporter. Yep. Ma matter of fact, so old-time, I'm afraid to even say how long I've been <laughs> in the media. But it, but it was something I, I was doing already as a, a newspaper reporter uh, back in Texas, back in Ohio, and back in Indiana, uh, where I would cover the African-American and Latino communities. I, in Hispanic Heritage Month would, would, would come along, and I would do all these stories about Hispanic Heritage Month. And then, uh, you know, uh, Black History Month would come, and I would do a, all, all these stories on Black History. And once those months were gone, we did fewer and fewer stories. And I said, now wait a minute. If these stories are newsworthy during Hispanic Heritage Month and Black History Month, then certainly they're... Uh, they are newsworthy the other 10 months of the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. So, so I knew there was a market there, and, and, and I knew there was an interest there for these stories. And, and I came here and I saw an opportunity where I could just use the experience that I've had to highlight these communities and talk about the positive right. news and, and, and talk about... a. a frankly, the great people who make up these communities in a way that's not being covered in the mainstream media. And that's how I came up with FrontRunnerNewJersey.com. I love it. And when you were explaining it to me there, Morgan Freeman came up in my mind real quick. Uh, I remember watching an interview with Morgan Freeman. Uh, I forget who was uh, conducting the interview, but they were talking about Black uh, History Month and Hispanic. And he's like, eh, forget the month. It's year round, so and I love that you've taken that concept, yes, yeah. and, and it really is. And and with media um, being what it is now, so 
uh, mainstream on social media or on the internet uh, with the uh, dot com, I believe that that's the way to go. Listen, I'm old school, as you said. I love a paper in my hand. I was eight, nine years old. I was asking my father to bring me newspapers uh, back in the day, the Philadelphia Bulletin, the Daily News, and, and on and on. But again, it's an interesting way of you doing it. And as you well know, we're here in the Arts and Humanities Building in Stockton University. So the students, they want to get a feel for that and, and where to... Uh, get their passion and continue. Obviously they have the passion and I like to talk to them as far as, uh, you know, being on our set, but also viewers here. Yeah. Talk to about a little bit of that where you see uh, the youth uh, yeah, uh, in media. Uh, we live in a news desert. Now, uh, in, in terms of the industry, the, a news desert uh, is where you don't have a daily newspaper or a TV station that covers an area like South, South Jersey. I'm stunned that there isn't a mainstream TV yeah. station that covers South Jersey. You have to get it from Philadelphia. Now, the great thing about it is that we're living in this unique age of technology that allows us to get into, you know, I'm never going to have enough money to get to, to build a printing press. Right. But to be able to go on WordPress and start a blog, which is where Front Runner New Jersey started, and now we have an email list approaching 4,000, 4, where we started three years ago, I would have never have imagined uh, that would have happened so soon, and we can and, and we continue to grow. We started our newsletter because Facebook took uh, took an interest in us, uh, and, and and we were and we joined uh, their Bulletin.com news uh, newsletter on the ground floor, and we're and we're really proud of that. Uh, we're really proud of the stories that we're doing from that. Your story appeared on the news uh, news newsletter, and. Uh, we are doing amazing things right now, and I am so happy for that, so happy for, uh, uh, for the medium. But for the young people, there's uh, 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 people say, well, the newspapers are shrinking, the, uh, the, uh, the, the TV stations, they aren't hiring as much. I disagree. There isn't a better time to get into the media if you're a young person than Absolutely. right now because of the technology has made it available. Uh, 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 the, 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 the platforms have made it available for you to get in and show your talent and show your worth. I, I, you know, I wish I had half the things that uh, uh, on, that yeah. of what's going on right now. No, you're exactly right, and, and I'm living proof of it. Had no media background and whatnot, just with uh, social media and uh, the dot coms and whatnot, just being able to share it folks with uh, shared with uh, folks created that uh, so listen we don't have a lot of time here you know a couple you have a fundraiser by the time this airs you would have a nice big fundraiser uh, Clyde we're going to put your uh, graphics up but let folks know again you know where to find you how to find you and whatnot yes uh, online a frontrunnernewjersey.com all all together spelled out frontrunnernewjersey.com and you can find our regular web website there our facebook newsletter is frnj extra and that will have exclusive interviews stories and columns and you can find that at frnj extra dot bulletin Dot com. And so those are the best ways that you can find us. We're doing a lot of exciting things. The NAACP National, National. Convention is coming here in July. We That's are right. and we are going to be covering that on a day on a daily basis. Or we're going to be looking, hopefully, for young people who can help us cover that. So so hopefully those are some opportunities uh, that we can provide for uh, for 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 young people. And again. Showing the positive, show, showing the things that you you won't normally see in the mainstream media. Right. That's why we're alive. That's our bread and butter. Trying to to uh, to, to shine a, a, not such a different spotlight, but a new spotlight on what's going on in the community. Well, folks, listen. Make sure you look for Front Runner New Jersey. Thanks again, Clyde. We appreciate you. Uh, hey. Listen, you're welcome back anytime. We're going to have Kaleem Shabazz and a bunch of others with the I National guess. Convention coming to town. Folks, stay right where you're at. We'll be right back.
Hey folks, welcome back to the show. Our next guest is the mayor of Atlantic City, Marty Small Sr. Mayor, welcome to the show, man. What's happening? Uh, what's going on, AC Mike? Uh, thank you for having me on your show and to the viewing audience. It's a great day here in the city of Atlantic City. Can we say great day? Great day. Yes. Say it out there too, make sure. Great day. You got it. So, hey, listen, Mayor Small, we appreciate you coming out here. You know your way around. We spoke a little bit earlier this afternoon. He told me, folks, yeah, by, it's by the, the library, right? And I had no library. What are you talking about? Alumni, we're going to talk about that. Basketball player. But listen, uh, Mayor Small, we've done this quite a few times. You've got your own show on a radio show. Do a great job. Communications major uh, here at Stockton University. Tell us a little bit about Marty Small, the child growing up in AC, the, the love for the city, and that sort of thing. And we're just going to step on and just find out where you are for today. Yes, well, um, thank you for the Stockton shout out. I put my Stockton degree to use right. with my communication degree. But um, I'm Mayor Marty Small Singh and Mayor of the great city of Atlantic City. I was born in one of the worst neighborhoods in town in Atlantic City, um, Virginia Avenue Courts area, VAC. Um, I grew up in a house with eight women, uh, wow. no, no man in the house in that environment. And um, it was a situation where my church, I grew up in Hamilton Memorial United Methodist Church, and the Boys and Girls Club was a safe haven. Organizations like PAL um, led me to sports. I'm a proud product of the Atlantic City public school system. I graduated from Atlantic City High School in 1993, where uh, I excelled in baseball and basketball, but I chose to play basketball in college. I then entered into the EOF program in June of 1993, um, you know, had some success a little bit on the basketball court, a um, just a little bit. And, you know, that propelled me. I used that as a vehicle to get my degree uh, in communications, a Bachelor of Arts degree in communications, had success on the court. Um, I went to three Sweet Sixteens during my time yeah. there, Stockton one Final Eight, and uh, personally, um, I was inducted into the Stockton Athletics uh, Hall of Fame as an individual in 2016, as I still hold the all-time leading rebounding record, and I believe I'm number 11 uh, in yeah. scoring now, 1,238 points. And then I had the honor of being inducted um, my team, two years later, in 2018, our 1995-96 team at the time had the best record in school history, 26-4. and four. We went to the Elite Eight, and we got inducted uh, as a team. Um, I also have a master's degree in uh, educational leadership from Cheney University. And right after that, I just, you know, uh, played in the USBL for the Atlantic City Seagulls. And... I got right to the workforce, um, started out as a caseworker um, with the welfare department, ran a joint program with the state, the city, and uh, the police department. It was the community police partnership grant. Atlantic City was one of, the, uh, one of six cities at that time to get it. And the stats and data showed that the area from New Jersey Avenue to Tennessee Avenue was the worst in the city. And it was my job to put on quality of life activities for youth and seniors. And we did that very well. Then I went on, uh, you know, left the city, went back home, so to speak, because I was a Boys and Girls Club kid, right. opened up the new Boys and Girls Club, started the Men's Midnight Basketball League, ran, uh, well, started out uh, being appointed by Jim Whelan to the Atlantic City Free Public them, yeah. free public Library, Board of Trustees, and then I all, always was political, and I ran for the Atlantic City Board of Education, was the number one vote getter when I was sworn in the following week. Um, I went on and uh, was elected vice president uh, by my peers. How old were you, and, and it was 27 then. Right, right. And then I had the itch to keep going, and I ran for city council, and, um, you know, I was the youngest elected councilman in the history of the city uh, at the age of 29. You know, Atlantic City politics wasn't right. fine for young people. So... I was living in the west yes. end of the county, yes. and I was reading about it. It's called yes. the Atlantic City Press. It ain't the Hamilton Press. It ain't the Mullican Township Press. Yes. The Atlantic City Press. Marty, I wanted to touch on that a little bit while we're on that, though. Gotcha. Your, your mentor, uh, uh, Jim Whalen. You had, I know you had a couple, but like he took a vested interest in you you know, because you got involved in, uh, with the politics. And I like to call it public service. You know, because that's what we are. You're serving the public. You know, how was that relationship? And just, you know, was, was he mayor? It uh, was assembly senator. It was genuine. Right. I mean, you know, you have some people that just can care about what you can do for them politically. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you a story. So everyone knew that I was a leader amongst my peers. And, you know, one day I was going to be 
where I'm at. So I had a conversation with Jim Whalen in his office, one-on-one -on -one like we're talking. I said, I got a job offer from the Boys and Girls Club that's going back home. And, you know, it's paying me more than the city, but I love what I'm doing, so forth and so on. You know, what you think? He said, well, let me just say this. As mayor of the Atlantic City, uh, I want Marty Small to stay because the jobs you're doing with these programs mm -hmm. make me look good. He said, but are you kidding me? As a friend of Marty Small, someone who I know that wants to run for politics, want to be a councilman, you can't be a councilman and work for the city. So you, you got to take that job. Mm -hmm. And I respected that. I and, you know, I took the job. You know, the rest is history. Um, it wasn't just me, but, you know, me and my peers, we enjoyed our relationship uh, with the late great Senator Assemblyman and three-term mayor, uh, Jim Whelan. He really genuinely cared for us and always put us in position to succeed. And, you know, we, we valued and appreciated that. Yeah, a great man. Got to meet him a few times on the boardwalk in different events. Always had time for everyone. That's the one thing. A genuine, uh, gentle heart, but a leader. And that's what we talk about. We hear the term mayor a lot, a boss and this and that. You're a leader. And what you've been surrounding yourself, and we're going to touch a lot more on this in the next segment, but the, the leadership skills of people who can gather, you know, because uh, let's face it, most people want to be led. I mean, and this is not an ego thing or whatnot. They want a leader. And talk about that a little bit, because I think that's important as we sit here at Stockton University. You know, you know I like to say a leader knows the way, shows the way, and goes the way. And that's how we lead. Um, leadership is the first uh, letter in our acronym-based leadership theme, which, which is called Let's Ace It. And these are the principles that I govern by as mayor and his leadership, expectations, transparency, and stability, accountability, credibility, and excellence in execution. And that's what I challenge my staff with every single day. And we see it, and we see what's going on there as a resident of Atlantic City. Uh, could have moved wherever I wanted, not on a, in a monetary way. A uh, single guy, retired from the Atlantic County Department of Public Safety, fancy name for the jail. And, uh, you know, it was Atlantic City. I mean, the, the beauty of it, it's a gem. Um, you know, the, people uh, knock it and whatnot. There's no city that doesn't have things that Listen, uh, go and, wrong. And, and that's the thing. It's my job as mayor. Right to promote this city. I'm That's the right. biggest ambassador, the biggest promoter, and I always have a slogan for that too, that I'm Atlantic City born, I'm Atlantic City bred, and when I die, I'm gonna be Atlantic City dead. I love this city, there's no right. question about it. And it's my job to push and promote. That's why it's always a great day here in the city of Atlantic City, in spite of, do we have challenges? Yes, but there's no better city uh, you know, in the world than the great city of Atlantic City, and I'm just thrilled to be the mayor. There you go, folks. So listen, since 1854, been here. It's uh, thriving. We're going to talk a little bit more in the next segment. So stay right where you're at. We'll be right back. Hey folks, welcome back. So glad that you're with us. Listen, we're here with the mayor of Atlantic City, Marty Small Sr. Mayor, again, thank you for being here and sticking around for an extra segment. No, you got a lot going on. You got so much going on. One of the things that I wanted to talk about, I think it's an unprecedented I, that I know, and I don't claim to be a know-it-all, but seven campaigns in the last couple of years. Tell the folks about how that is and having a team First of all, to, and we talk sports, having a team to stick through that also, that's not an easy feat. Absolutely. I'm blessed enough to have um, an infrastructure uh, for my campaign. You heard um, that infrastructure. We're, we're, I like that. We're known for our uh, ground game, but I ran on the polls in the uh, 2019 primary. Um, uh, mayor Gilliam left out October. So I be, by act of law, I became mayor, but also I was the second ward councilman elect. So technically on New Year's Day, I could have said, well, you know, this mayor thing ain't what it's cracked up to be. Right. I could have took the oath of office. Obviously, I didn't. My second ward seat vacated. Right after that, we had to engage in a change of government election. Mm. Then I had to run in the 20 primary, the 20 general, and then the 21 primary and the 2021 general. And I have a full four-year term. Um, I'm a few months into it, and we want to keep pushing our agenda along. We have a plan. 
We always have a plan, right. and um, we're doing right by the good people of Atlantic City. We spending uh, more, I mean, we're spending less money, but adding more services. We always talk about our division of youth recreation, singing, right. and multicultural services, which the city didn't have in place. Um, we have a brand new recreation program, youth services, which deals with everything that deals with youth that's not sports. Senior services, multicultural, LBGTQ affair, anti-violence, all of this and more for the people of Atlantic City. We've been able to give the people of Atlantic City education. Mm -hmm. um, we started the Mayor's Office Small Business Academy, which phase two is going to be ran by the New Jersey State African American Chamber of Commerce. We um, started with Empify, which is an investment cohort teaching the community how to invest for free. Now we're going to engage in partnership with Ocean Inc. Uh, with credit repair, and then we're going to wrap a bow on it, and we're going to teach the residents of Atlantic City for free how to put a financial plan in place. We're also going to educate them on how to secure uh, government uh, contracts and be involved in the process because they're not um, educated on the process, so it's our job uh, to educate them. And we're fiscally responsible. Um, for the third straight year, we're having a tax decrease. So look out for that announcement That's soon beautiful. and very soon. That's beautiful. A a and, Mayor, we smile when we're talking about the seven. I don't know how you smile because it's got to be exhausting. I know a little bit about the politics and running, but to, to and, seven and, is unprecedented. And, you know, just, um, politics is a blood sport. It's a context. Oh, sport. my gosh. Um, Times five you know, here. Yeah, we, we uh, you know, been through the bumps and, bumps and bruises. But ultimately, I always have this saying that men women and political opportunists lie, but the numbers and facts don't. It don't matter what they put out right. there, the residents of Atlantic City across all six wards, we won all of these elections by 70 plus percent of the vote. Blowouts. So yeah. Yeah. the people are speaking. They spoke. Yeah. And, and when you spoke uh, the, the, in the last uh, couple sentences there too, you know, when you're talking about um, uh, empowerment through education yes. and finance, and listen, I come from a family of eight, and, you know, my father and mother were working all the time and, and they happened to be there and they were there. But I'm going to be honest with you. You know, we weren't taught about how to save and checkbooks and build a business and stuff like that. So that stuff that, you know, and it wasn't happening in my neighborhood, you know, in Malka yeah. Township out there by Hamilton. And, and so it's it's awesome that you're doing that and you see that and at yes. the the way the residents have embraced it. I mean, it's amazing. You know, yes. it's for real. Yes. It's real. It's yes. not just something I'm running on and I'm going to do this and Absolutely. that. It's happening. Listen, and that's what we say, that the small administration says what it means right. and means what it say. And we, we've been able to do that. And obviously, education is uh, valuable in our house. As I stated, right. I have a master's degree. My wife has four degrees, including a doctorate. Um, and she's the first fe African-American female in the history of Atlantic City to be superintendent, as well as the first superintendent to ever live in the city. And we instill that in our children, Jada, who's 14, who will be going to Atlantic City High next year, and Marty Small Jr., who's 12. So if, you know, charity starts at home, That's right. we believe in education in the household, and obviously we're going to believe in it in the community as well. And I love the fact that you continue, and others have told me the same, to put the kids through the Atlantic City school system and whatnot. It's just the only way to go. Listen, we were products of public right. schools. We, yeah. we don't believe in anything else. That's right. And we're going to have her. You're going to be my mouthpiece to have her on the show. Okay, no So problem. we'll do that. So listen, there's so much stuff going on in the city. We want to talk about, as we taped this show today, there was a great uh, press conference at Dolphins Field. Uh, let's talk about some of that stuff. Then let's also talk about some of the big events coming into summer of yes. 2022. Yes, well, um, today I announced the beneficiaries for the uh, official Mayor Marty Small Senior inaugural ball. It is June 4th at um, Harris. It's from 7 to 11. And then if you're feeling froggy, leap for the after party. It's 11 uh, Ooh, to 3, but we're going to have uh, celebrities. This is going to be an event like it's never been before to benefit organizations in the Great Atlantic City Youth Association, which is the Atlantic City Dolphins. They're in the first position, followed by the Atlantic City Pal, Atlantic City Boys and Girls Club, and Empowerment Tools Coalition, which is a nonprofit um, by Shemaine gunn Gary. Nice. If we say yes. that we want to do things for youth, here's an opportunity. One million percent of the proceeds are going to the Atlantic City Dolphins. So this is going to be a big night. We're going to give Met Gala vibes. That's the theme and vibe that we're going for. And the title is Together We Rise. Love it. Which was my 2022 State of the City address because together 
everyone can make Atlantic City the best place that we know it can and will be. And Mayor Small, as an executive board member with the AC Pal, uh, mm -hmm. talking to uh, Speedy today, we're so you know happy that we're yes. out there and it's awesome. So I mean, really wanted to put that out there, and I'm glad that you spoke on that. And mm -hmm. the other two organizations uh, are benefiting from this event, and we're going to put this up on our social and everywhere else, and blow it up on our radio stations and whatnot. So yeah, man. Talk to us a little bit about some of the stuff that's happened. I don't mean to put you on the spot because well, I know you got so much listen, going no, on. No, well, well, the 800-pound gorilla in the room is what we're going to do with <laughs> Beta Phil. Right. We're entertaining right. a proposal uh, of a $2.7 billion yeah. development, which is centered around audio, audio enthusiasts. Um, it's going to have a boutique hotel, uh, condos, um, oceanfront uh, housing, a boardwalk on Beta Phil right around the edges. Um, on the Albany Avenue side, entertainment, retail, dining, you know, you name right. it, an automotive museum, mm -hmm. um, and an um, automotive school, which is going to give our children in Atlantic City an opportunity to join the automotive industry because there's a shortage there. Um, we're also excited about the $100 million uh, water park. Bart, um, yeah. We see the hole in the ground. Um, we know that it's going to come through. Um, Bart Blatstein is trying to corner the market with Showboat being an entertainment facility and a family entertainment facility. We also we already got the Lucky Snake, and um, in a couple of weeks the um, indoor go karts are going right. to open up, up. And you know we're excited about that. Uh, you know there's other projects on the books, but um, we don't have enough time to talk about no, it. No, we don't. We I know you seen just telling lengthy, me <laughs> that lengthy state of the city right. address. They probably like, look, awesome. all right, y'all, time is over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're in my ear telling me a few minutes. But yeah, you spoke of a couple, and listen, it's family friendly, it's adult friendly. We're going to have, uh, like you said, the, the electric motorized vehicles at the uh, showboat, and it's going to be an awesome, awesome uh, summer of 2022 making up. One of the things I wanted to thank you for was keeping the boardwalk open when March of 2020 hit. Yes. So yes. we got like 30 seconds or so. It's to you. You yes. finished well, this off. Well, well listen, um, we survived the pandemic, and that was because of our leadership. We kept the beach and boardwalk open for mental uh, and physical mm -hmm. exercise. The governor, the the governor said that, too, so we left ours open. We were able to feed 3,780 mm -hmm. senior citizens two hot meals a week. We were the first to lead in the clubhouse with the testing sites. I'm here in the great city of Atlantic City, and you know, through that leadership, working together, Atlantic City has come up with hopefully, which is the end of the of the pandemic, um, and did did right by the good people of Atlantic City, and I'm extremely proud about that because it was a challenging time. And I close with my quote by the late great Dr. Martin mm. Luther King: "The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands at moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy." And that was both challenging and controversial time, and not to mention the open container law, which allowed right. businesses to stay afloat during that time, as well as outdoor dining. That was under the leadership of Mayor Small. There you go, folks. Listen, this man's going to uh, do it and complete the uh, task at hand. We just need you to stick around for more than two, three, four terms. Just run it. You can't go to the state and do anything. You got to stay right here in Atlantic County, Atlantic City, 401. Listen, we appreciate you coming to the show, uh, Mayor Small. Uh, you're welcome here anytime. This is your home. Right. This is literally your home. And uh, folks, listen, make sure you catch him. He's got a great radio show. We're going to put that up, too. And uh, on Saturdays, we appreciate it. Thank you again. No and again, I'm serious about getting what the missus on the uh, show, too. Okay. There no you problem. go, folks. Stay right where you're at. We'll be right back. Hey folks, it's our belief here at the Mike Lopez TV show that you, the viewers, and our guests bring the show to life. Thanks to each and every one of you for joining us. To learn more about AC Mike, follow me on Facebook at Mike Lopez, AC Mike, Live Work Play AC, and on Instagram at AC Mike NJ. Remember to always live, work, play AC. I'll see you on the 48th.